Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I haven't posted in a while so I thought I'd bring you this uh, granum emerger pattern which should serve you well at this time of year. Uh, there's not, not every river has a granum hatch but if you do uh, you're lucky because you do tend to have some very good early season sport. It tends to coincide around the same time as when you're seeing the March browns but it just tends to be a very good early season hatch which brings the fish on and gives them a good source of protein early in the season. So my home river, the River Tyvee, is renowned for a very good granum hatch. You also have it on the likes of the River Usk, albeit uh, it tends to be lower down. I tend to fish the upper reaches where you don't get virtually any granum on the upper reaches, but it tends to be then lower down. You do get a very good granum hatch. So again, it's not every river. Having said that, the pattern I'm going to show you now will serve you well. If you just adjust the, more than anything, adjust the size, uh, will serve you well as a generic sedge kind of emerging pattern anyway. I've got a size 16 hook in the vise here. <clears throat> There's a couple of things. So the granum is not a, a particularly big fly. I do prefer to fish emerging patterns. And especially with the granum, basically as a granum hatches, it tends to hatch and then it's pretty much gone off the water anyway. So hence why uh, the emerging pattern does tend to uh, hold you in better stead than the adult pattern and also by the time you see the swarms and it can be you know, if you have a granum hatch it tends to be swarms blowing up and down the river by that time you've actually missed the best of the sport so if you're seeing a lot of granum already in the air you've probably missed the best of the sport uh, they can be a pretty early hatching uh, sedge, as in early hatching in the day and early hatching in the season so the majority of patterns I see out there currently for granum tend to have a protruding wing. Now the, again, the, the, the granum is quite a small sedge in relative terms. And as a result, a lot of the patterns I think are actually too big. So I tend to, I like to encompass the wing and everything over the length of the hook rather than create a protruding wing, which actually doubles the length of the sedge. So there's a couple of other things as well. So I'm pretty geeky in terms of studying the natural fly in terms of overall length and then colours, all this kind of stuff. I'm actually colourblind, so when I'm on the water, I'm, I'm hopeless. So I, I like to study it at home where I can uh, ask other people for, for for input. But yeah, so the, the, the body of a granum tends to be quite green and it's actually a lighter shade of green as it's emerging or hatching versus when it's an adult and dry if that makes sense so actually it goes a lot darker when it dries out but it's more of a more of like um yeah kind of an appley green when it's actually hatching through so anyway let's get on to the pattern so this is a size 16 in the in the vise here it really depends on the Overall, yeah, the, a size 16 in one make is very different to a size 16 in another make. Um, this is overall, I would say, around 8 millimeters long, as in the full length of, of that hook. And again, you have to have a curved shank, because I want this abdomen section to really drop under the water surface and really get trapped in the water surface, rather than being up, you know, up on top of the water surface. So I'm going to start. Uh, I've got a, a primrose... Vivas Primrose thread here in a 40 0. So I'm just going to start off by attaching that. It's not going to be an overly, well, most of my patterns are not actually, it's not going to be an overly complicated pattern. So it has a, I was saying, an aptly green body and a pretty dominant black rib going up through it. So that's all I'm doing with from that front is I'm using some, <clears throat> I've got on a, another another bobbin here, I've got some 10-0 uh, black thread. I was taking a, a small length of that and just attaching that there. And just pull that down. And just take that down around the bend of the hook like so. And take that back up. And then for the body, hens do a thing called body quills which is great stuff uh, this is 
pretty much the same stuff but on a hank they used to do it for blob tails of all of all things but uh, it's great stuff so we can take a couple of sections of that and this is in this one's actually in golden olive but anything around there it doesn't have to be exact but that kind of again that olivey green almost like an apple green so it's going to build the thread down over that just attaching it back down to where that black thread was secured to and then bring the thread back up now i'm going to build this up slightly so as opposed to uh, an olive you do have much more of a tapering on a sedge uh, so down the abdomen and so it's much fatter but i am gonna again just taper it so that it does drop through the surface film and that's a really important thing here that it does drop through the water uh water film or this section does and then you'll see the wing the encompassing wing that sticks up on top of the water surface so just build that up just build that taper up slowly like so and then just bring those sections there's two like that body quills just bring them up the body you see that kind of translucent green effect and with this stuff if you take it back over itself it does darken what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna slowly build that taper up with this again just like so and that's perfect so secure and tie that off now the thing if you've been following my channel and my flies you will see I do like doing at this point I do like putting a bit of flash and that's just to emulate the the air bubble or whatever when the fly uh, when the, the the natural is emerging and in this one I'm going to use some Unimyla uh, in peacock orange and I'm going to use the peacock side to so the green side but actually sorry before I do that bring this rib up and you want it to be spin the thread a little bit in your fingers just twist it up so that it doesn't splay too much as you bring it up bring that rib up it needs to be fairly bold bring it up through like so so that's perfect you can see it's a really contrasting rib on the body as per the natural okay like so and again then just that peacock unimyla tinsel so i'm going to tie it in so i'm going to get the peacock side up and you only need a turn of this in the thorax section let's so take that thread back over it and then just take one just a turn so all you need is that one turn and secure like so so at this point now because essentially there's nothing protecting that thread rib what we do now is we basically resin put a very thin coat of resin over that body so just tie off and then there's just a very thin thin coat over the body so just bring the it's got a needle here it's going to bring that over one little drop and it's going to spread that all around and what that does it helps with the translucency and slightly darkens that body again so again I'm not looking for a very light green I'm looking for a bit more of a an apple green so a mid a mid green if you like so that's perfect so that's just gonna help safeguard from the trout's teeth but also what that will do is 
it will help the abdomen drop under the water surface so that's done it's one little fiber it's going to cut that off I'm just going to finish up just with a laser pen it's going to cure that off quickly like so So now you've got a really secure body there that the fish aren't going to just tear into and you lose the, the efficiency of a fly after one fish or so. So now I'm going to reattach the thread. Bring it back up towards where the tinsel sits. So this section now is quite easy. We've got uh, a CDC bubble wing or loop wing. So I need uh, three decent sized CDC feathers for this. So if you're doing it for, for different sedge species, uh, you may uh, use more or, or less basically. So just adjust the amount of CDC accordingly. But uh, for the one, for this one on the size 16, three CDC feathers is perfect. Just wanna line the at the tips before you bring it up to the to the hook so when you've married the the tips of the CDC up use the natural curvature of the feathers because again we're going to be looping back over so use those natural curvatures and what you want to do as well is try and grip the the tips and release some of the feathers behind that you'll see why in a second just like so you can even if you want a proper even tips you can actually cut this because they're going to be a tied in so let's bring that back over back in just so you're butting in with where you secured the the tinsel so for the thorax really simple just a bit of uh black hair's ear nothing more complicated we want to use the really uh, spiky guard hairs which can be quite difficult to dub so it's going to put a bit of tacky wax on there which will help us with the dubbing process don't dub it too tightly and you can obviously pick it up afterwards uh, pick it out afterwards but put a, a decent amount on there and don't dub it too tightly just like that you can always add a bit more if need be and just take that down over that thorax section like so just brush back clearing up the the eye so what we're going to do now so with the CDC grip the CDC really far back so as load down the stalks as you can so that all these little loose fibers are not being trapped and then sweep back so you're actually bringing them back over the fly like so so adjust the wing until you get the desired length that looks perfect there and you can see the loop wing forming here but you do have these straggly ends sticking out as well when you're happy switch fingers pinch and loop and bring that down through so what you see now and what i was talking about earlier about the the wing protruding too much on a lot of the emerges that i'm seeing for for the grana the wing on the loop wing is actually encompassed over the length of the fly so i'm not gaining twice the length on this emerger it's actually quite a, a precise little emerger pattern for for the granum and again the, the granum isn't a particularly big sedge so bring your thread in in front of those stalks what you can do is before you trim the the cdc stalks you can actually tie off there so three four turns draw that in tightly what that does is it kicks those stalks up a little bit which gives you an easier 
uh, it gives you a better clearance of the, the hook eye basically. I then come in with your scissors and just trim them off. You don't have to be too exact in fairness because yeah, you know, sedges are quite messy in nature anyway. Uh, so don't be too too precise with the the cutting off there. So that's the that's the granum uh, emerger. So you can see all of these straggly ends up the top end. What will happen is so this the the abdomen will drop under. This loop wing will be up on top of the surface, and this has been just a a, a fantastic little uh, granum emerging pattern for me one that has certainly held me in good stead so i hope you tie up a few and if you do i hope it brings you luck again it is a generic sedge pattern so don't kind of just think it is uh, think of it as just a granum pattern yeah adjust the size of the hook and it will cover you for a, a myriad of different uh, sedge patterns but yep yeah, tie up a few and uh, tight lines